Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Sunny Makija. I'm a senior inside sales specialist with Crave Infotech, having seven plus in years of industry experience. Uh, now, before we getting get started, I'm going through some housekeeping to ensure you can interact with me, myself, and the speaker. Firstly, I would like to, <clears throat> if you uh, wish to ask any question to the presenter, we have Q and A session and chat feature enabled. We will be also launching a poll uh, in today's webinar. We invite you to participate by selecting your responses when they appear on your screens. And we will have a Q&A session at the end, or, end to answer your questions. Now, I would like to uh, welcome Jeff Penall and uh, Patrick Willett. To, uh, we are so glad that you could hear today to share your insight on Fiori uh, for digitizing plant maintenance process. Uh, Jeff Penall is a senior director in SAP's Global Center of Excellence, focused on field service and intelligent asset management. He advises service organizations how to optimize their field service operations, improve asset performance, and differentiate their brands based on customer value and experience. Jeff has worked with the companies in more than 20 countries, covering public sector and the municipalities, uh, industrial manufacturers, energy and utilities, medical technology, and high-tech manufacturers. And from Crave Infotech, we have Pat Patrick Will Willett. He has uh, 20 plus. Uh, he has spent 20 uh, plus years in this. SAP space working for both partners and SAP and uh, he is our chief growth officer based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota in the US. Now without any further ado, uh, I would like to hand over to Jeff to start the presentation. Jeff, uh, you can share your screen now. Okay. I'll just a moment. There we go. Okay, hello everyone. Um, as uh, Sunny said, um, I'm Jeff Pinnell with uh, SAP's uh, Global uh, Center of Excellence uh, focused on service and asset management. And it's great to be with you today. And um, thank you to Crave, uh, the Crave team for inviting SAP to be a part of this, uh, this webinar. So um, what I'm going to do is just spend about 10 minutes or so talking about um, what's driving our intelligent asset management strategy at SAP and give you a few insights into what's new, as well as provide you with some links uh, for to ensure you're continuously um, have access to relevant information around what's new, what's coming, the broader EAM community uh, around SAP, um, if you're not already uh, a part of that. So with that, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the market dynamics and some of the challenges that we're trying to solve for our customers with our portfolio. So with many organizations, especially with uh, product manufacturing companies, whether that's industrial manufacturers, or medical technology, high tech, um, and we're seeing this across the board, um, the, the, the roles between manufacturer, between um, owner operators, who's doing responsible for maintenance, who's providing service from the outside are starting to blur. Um, and there's a lot of great opportunities to be able to optimize the use of talent from that whole network of um, uh, participants, whether it's OEM, independent service and maintenance providers, as well as your own maintenance teams to uh, deliver the uh, best outcomes from, from an asset performance um, perspective. We also see in many organizations, the maintenance strategy, the maintenance programs they put in place when assets were installed, whether it's an engineered asset or purchased asset, often are quite static and haven't evolved as the operating conditions have changed um, over time. So helping the customers um, respond in a dynamic way to the current operating context and ensure the uh, maintenance strategies and the tactics that are in place really reflect the needs of the equipment and the facilities and, and the organizations um, on an ongoing basis. Um, we see companies are trying to adopt uh, more connected assets and be able to use that not only for monitoring 
uh, performance from a historical perspective, but helping them shift to a more prescriptive and predictive uh, model, both for their own internal maintenance, but also how they engage from some of their maintenance and service providers and specialists from the, from the outside. Um, you, most of you have probably seen challenges around handover of information um, from those different different parties. So working in, in the different silos, both within and outside of your organization. Um, and again, being able to tap into those um, talent networks, especially with if we look at the last two years and some of the changing roles where some people were were in person, some people were um, operating remotely. So looking at options for providing um, remote support and, and those types of things to uh, people who are on site um, and uh, those, those changing dynamics really trying to help our customers with, uh, with that. So when we look at our asset management portfolio, these are some of the sort of the top of mind things that our product organization and our solution management organization is, is really um, working to, to address. And, and the nice thing about today, there's, there's some really exciting technologies that are, I mean, many of these things have been evolving for uh, quite a few years now, but are starting to get much more broad adoption, whether it's connected assets through IoT, the ability to create a digital twin so that um, digital record of the asset and the asset performance um, is updated in real time, um, consistent with the actual physical asset. We're starting to see lots of applications for AGVs and drones, lots of cases where um, confined space entry or inspections in certain areas or utilities with uh, vegetation management inspections or roadworks, um, being able to use a lot of technology to do the inspections and use that, that data that's being captured to automatically drive um, not only uh, maintenance, but also some capital investment planning as, as people are looking, looking forward. Um, and again, in, in terms of being able to adopt these technologies and scale them across your organization, the cloud opens up some tremendous opportunities for companies to be able to adopt faster, to uh, innovate faster um, with uh, much lower barriers of entry to adopt those technologies than, than they have uh, before. And I think one of the things that's um, we see a lot, and this is an area where organizations like uh, Crave Info, Infotech can, can really help um, from a market perspective, is over 75% of organizations recognize the importance of shifting to a predictive model, but just over 20% believe they have effectively uh, implemented some of those technologies and are really able to um, get value out of, out of what's available in the market. Um, similarly, um, being able to standardize maintenance approaches across the organization and, and optimize across the organization is another area that, it, that a lot of organizations are striving towards for optimizing their asset performance. Again, with some of those silos, some of the things that, that we're trying to do in, in terms of breaking those things down, still a small percentage of organizations feel like they've, they've really been able to um, effectively address, address that challenge. So when we look at our portfolio of solutions and our innovation strategy, it's really focused in um, not only the core asset management, work management, which you'll see from an S4 HANA perspective, or for those of you who are still operating with that uh, with ECC um, uh, in the plant maintenance module, um, just the work order management, notifications, planning, execution capturing capturing that so that those those core pieces are still really important but in order to address some of these challenges we've augmented that with some additional cloud um, ca solution capabilities and modules for asset performance management so being able to not only um, determine uh, just or manage your work orders but also effectively do a risk and criticality analysis and RCM. FMICA to be able to determine 
what um, the right maintenance strategy um, is. So those are asset performance management um, solutions. The um, ability to connect assets in real time with um, IoT is a key part of that, uh, that strategy as well. And when we talk about some of the silos, um, the asset intelligence network is something that's um, really interesting to, to a lot of our customers in being able to really manage the life cycle of the equipment, all the information related to that equipment, both master data, as well as ongoing performance, and be able to share that not only within your organization, um, if you're trying to standardize across your organization in terms of what are the best maintenance practices and uh, spare parts recommendations to apply to a certain model of equipment and a certain operating context, but also how to collaborate on that with um, external service providers, with uh, the product manufacturers who um, may be supporting you with, uh, with uptime, um, et cetera. So when we look at the intelligent asset management portfolio, it, there's, there's a, a lot of value added capabilities beyond uh, work, work in asset management. And I'm, I'm just going to maybe highlight a few new innovations in this area that may be of interest to you. So one of the things for any of you uh, who are familiar with the SAP portfolio, Fieldglass is a solution that helps manage um, scope statements of work um, with, uh, with external um, contractors and, and organizations and, and manage the um, contractors, onboarding, um, contingent labor, um, et cetera. But with the Asset Intelligence Network now, what we're able to do is seamlessly hand over uh, work orders to um, third-party companies in the context of the statement of work that they're, they're executing. So it really provides you with the ability to um, plan your maintenance activities independent in a centralized way and have visibility in a centralized way, um, independent of who's actually executing the work and really allows you to more seamlessly um, stay in up, up to date on, on the status of the work from a contractor perspective, um, as well as um, tight tie-ins to all of the invoice and billing comp um, contract performance management on, on the back end. And, and you'll um, see some links in the deck if you want to learn more around these uh, collaborative uh, work orders and how to facilitate that, that exchange with uh, between yourselves as well as any service providers that you're engaging to support you with your uh, maintenance and asset performance. Another area that's really exciting is just continuing to um, uh, tighten the um, closed loop between um, asset performance management and EAM. So when we, we, we look forward from, from an SAP perspective, as you're using our asset performance management solutions to do the risk and criticality analysis, to do the F FMEAs, uh, recommend the appropriate maintenance strategies, and revisit those to keep them evergreen on an ongoing basis, that closed loop to continue to update those strategies in um, your core maintenance operations, whether it's S4HANA or an ECC, um, that, that closed loop um, is, is really exciting um, with, a, with some new innovations that we're um, putting, putting in place. Another area of, of interest, um, if you're not familiar with, is the Predictive Asset Insights, again, part of our um, asset performance management solutions, being able to tie in directly to um, the feeds you're getting from equipment um, and being able to use that to determine uh, maintenance actions that, that need to be taken um, in a predictive uh, manner. So there's some really exciting things happening in that area as well. For those of you who have a lot of um, engineers and technicians out in your um, plants and your facilities, or maybe some of you are, say, in the utilities organization and you have a much more distributed workforce. The um, asset manager solution has a lot of new innovations um, with new personas. So being able to standardize on the SAP mobile services platform and using mobile asset manager now on that same platform, um, you're able to add additional personas for 
inventory management. There's some more specialized persona capabilities coming um, in 2022 um, for uh, field service uh, management, um, which is really, uh, really interesting. But again, allows you to standardize on that one mobile platform and then layer on the personas that are needed for, um, for, for your operations. Um, there's a few other things. If you're familiar with the new checklists that have been introduced um, in, in S for HANA, um, they're supported for doing inspections, um, as well as some of the phase model, the new workflows um, in the uh, maintenance, um, sorry, your maintenance process and, and some of the best practices. Um, is supported, um, as well as uh, better support for being able to share devices across across um, uh, different uh, people, um, rather than each person having to have your own device, which can have a, a big economic impact. So those are some things that uh, maybe you're familiar with already, but uh, definitely those of you that are working with mobility um, are, are probably interested um, in learning more about it. Um, the other thing I might mention, and again, it depends on what industry that you're, you're in, but working spatially is, is really important to many of our customers. So not only being able to visualize the status of work in a spatial um, context, but also being able to plan work, to be able to um, initiate work. Um, and and take action. So um, one of the one of the areas of innovation is really continuing to enable our customers who um, operate in a spatial context to be able to drive a lot of their actions and activities from a, a spatial perspective, rather than looking at at data tables and, and traditional um, text based um, inputs. Um, I've included a slide here that you can go check out um, uh, at, a, at a later date that highlights some of the things we've just talked about, but also has links to um, the asset management roadmap if you're looking for more information. And I'll also mention there's some, some great um, sources of, of information for you. There's an EAM community around SAP that um, involves a lot of our customers. So um, on that page, you'll, you'll see... Um, a summary of, of what's new, um, invitations to webinars, uh, product management updates, um, et cetera. Um, I've included links to the roadmap, best practices explore, and, and a variety of other um, capabilities if you're looking for some direct links to learn more. And of course, um, if uh, there are any specific questions, you can always uh, send me an email and uh, we, can, uh, we can follow up. So. Thank you, and I'll hand, uh, hand it back to uh, Sonny and Patrick to uh, um, talk about the uh, um, uh, main the main event. So, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Jeff, for your insight. Let me just start sharing my screen. Mm, let me know, Pat, if you can see the screen. I'll just move next. Yep, I can see it. Okay. Very good. All right, so why Crave Infotech? Uh, we've been around a long time. We've been around since 2007. Uh, we have 50 plus prepackaged products for SAP. Uh, we've worked with several large enterprise customers, uh, 50 plus. We have a team that's uh, currently at 150 plus and we continue to grow. Uh, we have a lot of different partnerships established between SAP, Zebra, uh, AWS, uh, Google, um, several certifications and awards uh, from SAP. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just a look at our complete product and service offering portfolio. Um, again, so a lot of different um, IP uh, products. Uh, many of these are on the SAP store, uh, as well as different services to help support those. Um, next slide. So, uh, EAM moving from uh, reactive to predictive. Uh, I'm sure many of you can relate to these, these different problems. 
Uh, and typically there are three different key roles within a maintenance organization uh, that all have different expectations from the maintenance engineer, maintenance planner, plan head, uh, but they don't really talk to each other. They're siloed because the system is not digitized. So they face many challenges meeting their individual goals. goals sorry. So how can we help that? Uh, next slide, please. Sonny, did you want to run a poll real quick? I will do it once after you finish this, explain this okay. slide. Yeah. Yep, yeah. sounds good. So this is our intelligent asset management maturity model. So this, this slide right here talks about uh, going from reactive uh, to predictive. It's called our maturity curve. So most organizations today are reactive. Um, some are preventative. Very few are condition-based. And then it's rare that, um, that some are predictive. Most organizations want to get here to predictive. So how can we help? How can we help get there? So, uh, Sonny, did you want to run that poll now? Before we Definitely. Move on to the sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would just uh, launching the poll right now and I request all attendees to participate. In the meantime, they'll just wait 10 to 20 seconds and Pat, you can take over again. Sounds good. But I think you can start and I'll just leave the poll open right now. And meantime, they can uh, respond to the poll questions. Sure. Do you want to move to the uh, next slide? Definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. So asset performance and automation. So the way that we help companies is we map different tools, which are uh, Crave IP and SAP tools uh, to help them go through this whole reactive predict to predictive journey. So how do we do that? First thing, uh, you need to be digitized. So you need an ERP system that you have um, you know, a system of record. The next step is to do uh, data acquisition. So how do, we, how do we acquire that data? That's where you use sources such as mobility, workforce, um, management, IoT. And then once you have uh, better information and you have good data, you, you have a system of record and you can do analysis on that data. And based on this analysis, you can create corrective action, which you create, uh, you can create these recommendations and corrective actions. Uh, and provide feedback to your mobile system and feedback. Uh, and that's how we create this, is how we map our tools along with SAP tools and how we go from reactive to predictive. Uh, next slide, please. So these, uh, this slide uh, really is just referring to a lot of our EAM uh, innovations around intelligent asset management. Uh, we've got uh, asset intelligent network, asset strategy performance management, predictive maintenance, uh, solution implementation, barcode, RFID enablement. Uh, next slide. So these are a lot of our different offerings um, around SAP implementation, SAP mobility, Intelligent Asset Management, uh, our Crave prepackaged solutions for calibration, planning workbench, flexible scheduling and dispatch, asset inventory and, uh, inspection, barcode and IRFID enablement, mobile computing hardware. Uh, next slide, please. So implementation methodology, we start with uh, design thinking and go through that uh, process. If 
from planning, design thinking, um, UX uh, design and prototyping, baseline configuration, project realization and testing, and then go live. Uh, next slide, please. So these are a lot of our, um, or I should say a snapshot of some of our experience with SAP Mobility um, with several of our customers and what, of course, what we've done. Uh, next slide, please. Again, just another snapshot of, of some of our clients and what industries we play in. Uh, life sciences, utilities, oil and gas, manufacturing, several others. Uh, next slide, please. And that's it. So if you have any uh, questions, uh, please feel free to uh, drop us a line and we'd be happy to help. Is there anything uh, else, uh, Sonny? No, I think we're just waiting if anyone having any questions. We are open to answer right now. You can type it in your Q&A or chat box and we will be open to answer that. Um, Lee Stronger, yes, we will be sending you the recording as well as the slides, uh, this deck as well on email in, in a day or two. Yes. I think uh, we don't have any questions now, so I think we can wind up. So thank you, uh, Jeff, and thank you, Patrick, for uh, sharing your insight on Fiori for uh, IAM as well as uh, for plant maintenance process. And I would also thank all the attendees to attend this session. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.